So that's why I don't have to go to Jameson, Fawcett, and Brown, the other commentaries, to try to find out what the thing means. And tonight, each of us is in this parable. Isn't that good? There are four categories in the parable, and we're going to talk about each of them just for a moment. Listen, kids, you're in the parable. Dad, Mom, you're in the parable. And I just simply want you to be honest before God tonight, just, just as if you were a judgment. And I want you to find your place in the parable. And there's only one place to be, really. That's in the fourth category. And as we come down through these other categories, if you recognize yourself, just make a note of it and say, Oh God, help me. I'm in that category. So let's read the parable in the fourth verse of the eighth chapter of Luke. And when much people were come together and were come to him out of every city, he spake by a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. And it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured. Some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell on thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And other fell on good ground, sprang up, bare fruit, a hundredfold. And if I were you, I believe I'd just take my pen and mark that last category, hundredfold. That's, that's a numeral of perfection. It's a round number. It, it is complete. And Jesus said we bring forth fruit, 40, 60, or a hundredfold. You're a hundredfold Christian. So tonight, don't you want to be a complete, mature, hundredfold Christian? Mm -hmm. You ought to. And then when he had spake these things, he, he cried, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. This morning I asked my little grandson, Zachary. I said, Zach, what did the preacher preach about last night? And he was already dazed from sleep when he woke up this morning. And he said, I don't know, Grandpa. <laughs> and he's shocked. He usually knows exactly what's going on. And so I said, well, I said, why is it that you don't know what the preacher preached about? He said, well, Grandpa, sometimes you, you, you hear, but you don't listen. <laughs> I said, oh, how true that is. You hear, but you don't listen. And then we got back into the sermon, and I went down with all the points that Brother John made, and he remembered every one of them. Really, he had heard, but yet he didn't hear. Now Jesus says, that he that hath an ear, let him hear. Now you know, some, some, I, I've, I've announced three times the book and the chapter that I'm re reading from, and some of you can't tell me what chapter it is. Hmm? Some of you may not even be able to tell me the book I'm reading from. Come on now. <laughs> and I, I, you're not deaf, are you? Really? You're not deaf? I've said it three times, and yet you can't tell me what it is. Now start listening. Start hearing it. Jesus said we have eyes to see, but we don't see. We have ears to hear, but we don't hear. And so he said that's the reason the parable. All right. Now then he gives the disciples to ask him in the ninth verse, what might this parable be? Now, I'm, I'm glad Jesus gave us the commentary because we'd have an X number of commentaries on this. And Jesus answered them and said this, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables that seeing they might not see and hearing they might not understand. Now, the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Now you get hold of this, the seed, it's, it's the sowing of the seed. The seed is the word of God, and those by the wayside are they that hear. And then comes the devil and takes the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. I believe I'd mark that, lest they believe and be saved. And then he says, they on a rock today, which when they hear,